Now, the second presidential summit is currently underway in Midrand. The summit aims to take stock of progress uh, to date and to affirm the political commitment and promises to decisively end the pandemic of gender-based violence and femicide in South Africa. Now, various activists have asked for a state of disaster on gender-based violence to be declared against uh, women and children. And both our guests uh, will be part of the summit and they join us now for this discussion. Alon Tlantlas Kosana is from Sonke Gender Justice and Wendy Pukir is founder and coordinator of Ubuntu Rural Women and Youth Movement. Alon Tlantla, Wendy, thanks so much for being with us. Welcome to Morning Live to both of you. Morning and thank you for having us. Now, Nontantla, let me start with you. Just in terms of uh, the progress that has been made since the first summit, can we sum that up and uh, just look at the strides that have been made? Small strides have been made, I uh, think, through the NSP 100 Days Challenge uh, campaign. Um, you know, there are lessons learned from that uh, activity, but there's still a lot to be done. There's a lot of complaints from the local level, from the survivors that we are aware of and have engaged with different stakeholders as it must prepare a campaign that is uh, supported by USAID that is working in different provinces. What are some of those complaints at a grassroots level? The service provision for survivors, one for psychosocial support that the Department of Social Development still have a lot of gaps in terms of providing psychosocial support for survivors, but also the uh, shelters for women, uh, there are also gaps there. The major one that we are more concerned about is the uh, Tutuzela care centers, because we've seen that the level of uh, service that is provided there, it's deteriorating. Um, you know, we find some of the Tutuzela care centers have struggles of resources like furnitures, but also the environment itself is not welcoming to the survivor. The fact that we don't have 24-hour police uh, uh, services in the Tutuzela care center, they have to be called and come in. But initially, when this concept uh, was, was, was initiated, we had a very good service but now it is deteriorating and a lot of gaps are, are happening. You know, Nonsanta, on that score, I must tell you, because this is something that I've personally taken an interest in with regard to the Tutuzela care centres. And I think uh, with Morning Live, we were there for the launch of the one in Cape Town not so long ago. And mm -hmm. all the things that you mentioned have been incorporated into that space. So if anything, uh, I think they are listening and things are changing, but there are still too few centers. I mean, mm. the accessibility is still a problem. Um, but mm. I think what was positive there was that we could actually see that you are being heard, you are being listened to. There was a space for the police. Uh, it was next to a hospital, but they had managed to bring everything into that one center. And I think you would be quite happy to see what is happening. But don't stop talking because at least we see, uh, you know, the fruits uh, being brought to bear of the advocacy that you've been doing. We've just lost Wendy for the moment. So I'm gonna continue with you, Nontlantla. Uh, uh, the money that was pledged uh, at the inaugural summit, uh, do we know how that was spent? Do we have a breakdown of how much was actually pledged and how much was spent and how? Wow. Um, the money was 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 distributed to certain um, organisations and service providers. However, the issue of accountability in terms of saying what went where and what that has done that is what is lacking, and that is what most of the community people would like to know. The challenge with, with, with the work around the NSP, it's mostly done virtually, which excludes a lot of local uh, level organizations. And that also brings about a, you know, a concern from them of not being informed of what is happening, even if there's good work that has been done, but they are being excluded on, on, on really knowing exactly what has happened and what is still going to be done. It was amazing during this, the, the Gauteng pre-summit pre uh, engagement that most of the NGOs, they don't even know what is the NSP. So we really need to strengthen the communication element around the implementation of the NSP and the monitoring of the, of the NSP as we are about to localize the NSP. 
Wendy Pekir is back with us. Uh, Wendy, from your side, uh, just in terms of taking stock from the inaugural summit until now, what has stood out for you in terms of progress made? Um, I know the... Uh, um, the NSP has been put into place, summits. You know, there's a lot of conversations around new legislation. Um, the Domestic Violence Act has been this new amendment, amendments to the Act. There's also new amendments to the Sexual Offences Act. But we know, you know, to have the law is one thing, but implementation of the law might be a challenge. We have conversations on different spheres of government. We have provincial summit. But on the ground, very, very little has changed. 855 women, 243 children were killed between April and June this year. We're talking about three months. Oh. That is alarming statistics. Children, babies, you know, they had a future ahead of them. Parents, they had dreams for their children. They know more. The sexual assault matters. More than 11,000 were reported. You know, there's, there's so many issues and less than 50% make that to court. In a lot of these cases, the conviction rates are so low. We still see murderers being released on bail. We still see rapists getting set free on and women's lives, their lives are threatened. And that is problematic. I believe that, you know, if we don't have a process from the ground, where the community are involved in decision making, in terms of what responses will best, work best for, for our communities, gender-based violence, the statistics will not be coming down. When we went to the provincial summit, we saw that 74% of cases, of intimate femicide cases and rape cases, it's done by people that are known that you live in close proximity. Um, and that's problematic. 7.3% is done by an unknown person. But how can we as women and children not feel safe in the country of our birth? We, we're not safe to walk the streets. Children are not safe in their homes, in the communities, in crisis at school. We are not safe. So I would say that very, very, very little has really changed. And for rural women who are far from courts, who are far from police stations, you know, justice is, there's such a long um, a rope for women to see that justice happen for them. And I think uh, this is, of course, uh, the sad part uh, because the statistics that you mentioned and talking about uh, these stats in a three-month period, that is a pandemic uh, in and of itself. And if nothing is changing, um, what is the point then of having summits such as these uh, uh, if very little is shifting on the ground? Because women obviously still need access to um, assistance once uh, they find themselves in these situations. Uh, what about um, also looking at their socioeconomic situation? Because it's one thing to say to a woman, if you're in an abusive situation, you need to leave. But leave to where? Um, how are yes. we dealing with all of that in order to create a conducive environment for women to actually flee these abusive situations, Don Tlantla? Yeah, I think what you're asking, Sukina, is, is, is based on the pillar five of the NSP. We still need to see more of commitment from, from government in terms of really... Um, applying what they are promising in terms of prioritizing women businesses uh, but also within the workspace you know we know that uh, even the private sector is coming up a bit slow we still need to see the private sector really coming to party and contributing towards the economic development of women in South Africa and more especially in the areas where women are, are, are disadvantaged because we see a lot of women who are in those spaces also carrying the brand of being supporters while there are survivors with very, in fact, with no resources, you know, no source of income. It's not that they don't have the ability to do so, but opportunities have to be created and made available for women to be able to do that. So if we can, we can monitor the Pillar 5 um, commitment in the NSP, I think we would see some changes. But at the moment, there is still a lot to be done.
But we have a ministry that's dedicated to uh, uh, basically looking after the well-being of women and children, people with disabilities, mm -hmm. Wendy. Um, we have a government that talks the talk, but uh, when are we going to walk the walk? Because what about gender uh, budgeting, for example? And I remember raising this with Dr. Nkosa Zanat Lamini Zuma, the COCTA minister, about gender budgeting and making sure mm. that, you know, we are cognizant of all of these issues as we move through government in the various spheres um, so that we can actually do what we say we want to do. It cannot be all that difficult to say there must be a facility in every town because all these municipalities have facilities that are lying derelict they have land if nothing else that can be um, uh, you know utilized so why do we not have these facilities for women and children wendy um I think maybe she might have the connection. Can you hear me? We, we can, can you hear, hear me? now? Yes. Yes, thank you so much. I'm in Johannesburg. I'm on my way to the summit now, and my reception is a bit bad, so I apologize for that. We've seen through years there's, there's very little budget when it comes to, to gender and, and gender-based violence responses. The Commission for Gender Equality gets very little money. If you compare it with construction and what goes to weapons and, and, and so forth, the police and other things, there's a lot of money. It, it depends where we, where we allocate our money, which portion of the... Well, uh, unfortunately, Wendy's connection not great there. And as she said, uh, she's uh, trying to make her way to um, the summit uh, here in Johannesburg. Uh, it's but going to gender-based violence and, and gender men, women and children, vulnerable society, our communities. Can you hear me? Wendy, uh, that connection is not great. Uh, I think we... I'm so sorry. Yes. Yeah. Let, me, let me just try again. Let me okay. just try again. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that very little budget goes to the Commission for Gender Equality. No. Unfortunately, that's not working. So I think we're going to have to uh, put that on hold with Wendy. Perhaps we can try again with Wendy tomorrow because the summer takes place today and tomorrow. But we still have uh, Nontlantla's Kosana. And I think Nontlantla's uh, connection is better this morning. Now, Tlanta, just to that point, um, at some point we, we, we're going to have to stop uh, making excuses as government. We're going to have to stop accepting those excuses as a broader society because if we really want to get down to it, surely we can. Definitely. I think, you know, the most disappointing part in the whole NSP issue in all the pillars is the fact that most of the engagements and activities are led by development partners and the civil society organization. Even if you look at the uh, first report of the NSP, most of the work that was reported on, it was the work that was done by the civil society organization. So in terms of the commitment from government, I think we get uh, lip service, but we don't see where the money goes because even now we don't have this uh, NSP uh, budgeted for fully by government. Even if we get the, the GPV fund, that is given to small organizations, very small amount of money that has been given to the, to the NGOs to be able to implement the activities of the NSP. So definitely our government is not coming to party, even they don't want to commit rents into this work. So we still have a lot of work to do. In, in, in fact, even in this summit, when you look at the agenda, you see that the first day it's all about government reporting, which happened in the in the in the Houting a, a province a pre-summit engagement. But it's 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 reporting and not showing commitment. 
and accountability in a way. So, yeah, we still have a long way to go. I think as civil society organization, we need to garner ourselves together and, and work towards this. But also involvement at the IDP level, at the local level, we need to make sure that women are represented there. There are issues that being raised when the local budgets are made. You know, there are inputs from the local level and we also monitor the local level budgets. So looking at the statistics and the fact that women and children are dying and uh, these are all too vivid because we report on these on a daily basis. There are days when you start off, um, you know, a show and you look at the top stories mm -hmm. and it is absolutely harrowing. So we are quite aware of the gruesome nature of these crimes and just how often they play out. But again, most people would say, this is a talk shop. Um, let's talk to that, uh, uh, Nontlantla, uh, because you said there were some strides. And it may not have been great, but, but something came out of it. But also, what are your expectations from this two-day summit, realistically? Our expectation is one to get um, commitment, which we, we always get, but also for me, what is more important is to say, this is the budget that is allocated for the NSP as government to commit to this amount. There are a lot of studies and, 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 and submissions in terms of how much does GPV cost this country? Because without resources, even civil society organizations are unable to deliver what is supposed to be delivered. But also some of the complaints that we get from those very same officials Few of those who are committed, they don't have cars, you know, some of them, they don't have tests, they don't have data to support the survivors. During COVID, it was worse. So if the, the, the president and, and, and Treasury could put figures against the activities of the national strategic plan, then maybe that would show some kind of, you know, difference in terms of the implementation. But you also need to have more stronger monitoring systems that we follow and we make sure that they happen. And we don't really need to wait until the, the, the next summit. There are engagements that are ongoing, like I've said, that are excluding smaller organizations that don't have access, access to, to virtual systems. Let us have engagement at the local level and stop using the virtual system because it excludes a lot of people and information has been missed. So for us to be able to continue and understand that there is commitment, let the rents be against activities. Nontlantla, thanks so much for your time this morning. And of course, uh, we'll be following the developments at the summit. Uh, Nontlantla Skosana is a CEM unit manager at Songke Gender Justice. And we also had with us earlier uh, Wendy Pakir, founder and coordinator of Ubuntu Rural Women.